Welcome to the Asbestos Knowledge Empire. What does asbestos management mean to you? I used to really struggle with the asbestos management at my site, but now it's a breeze. It used to be really expensive. I was paying loads, but now I've got my asbestos power team in place. It's so much easier. Asbestos can be a pain in the ass if not handled right. We had to stop the job because asbestos was discovered. Now we don't have that problem. Asbestos management is easier than you think. Asbestos management. Be proactive, not reactive. Think about asbestos first, not last. And now your hosts, best-selling authors and asbestos experts, Ian Stone and Neil Munro. Hi, welcome to the Asbestos Knowledge Empire. I'm Ian Stone. And I'm Neil Munro. So today, a bit of a, a strange one, a bit of a different one to what we usually do. We're not talking about the subject uh, overall. I'm not interviewing somebody who's not from the industry or an industry um, person that I don't know. I'm going to interview Neil Munro. So, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll go through the water it. <laughs> be general, be general. <laughs> so, um, we'll start at the beginning. Yeah. Tell me about yourself and, and what you've done in the industry over the years, <coughs> kind of the overall flavour. Yeah, okay. So, pretty much like most people, I think, that uh, come into this industry, um, I had no knowledge about asbestos. So, I sort of fell into it. Um, I saw an advert in the local paper. Um, I was working at um, a credit card head office um, for one of the banks. That was nine to five, mm -hmm. Monday to Friday. Um, I got an hour for lunch, 15 minute breaks in the morning and afternoon. So I was like working six and a half hours a day. So why did you want to leave that? But it was just <laughs> boring. Right. The, the, it was just so boring because previously before that I, I came from a catering background so I worked for Pizza Hut uh, where I was a, a manager there mm. so that was kind of where I'd, I'd come from really my background was working in catering so it's quite fast paced shift, and shift work shift work yeah um, you know sort of like mornings early mornings late nights yeah. um, sometimes some long days really fast paced really hard sort of work yeah um, I would definitely recommend, like, with my, my children, if you can cope within that environment and mm. get on in that environment, you can pretty much do anything because it is really hard work. And that kind of gave me a good grounding. So when I went to the office job, I was a bit like, oh, this is, this is just too, this is too boring. This is too boring. Yeah. So I was kind of looking for, I didn't want to go back to the, the catering because um, the reason I left that was the socialness for it. Like, all of my, you know, um, yeah. My partner at the time was yeah. on like normal work hours and I was not Horrible working shift hours. work. Yeah. Your weekend would have been midweek and your yeah. friends would have been at weekends. Exactly that. And you can never plan anything because you you wrote it and stuff like that. So it's yeah. kind of, that was the reason why I left that. Um, so yeah, the, and then I, I, I was bored with the office job and I was looking for something else. And yeah. I saw this advert for training as business consultant. Um, and the thing that attracted me was you got a, a company van. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, wow, yeah, your own company van. So that's what that's kind of what attracted me. Um, but at that time, I didn't even know what asbestos was. I've mm. never even heard of it. Yeah. Um, so that was quite a, an eye opener. So you were like going completely back. blind yeah. when you came into the industry. What, what is that? I don't even know what it is. Wow. Um, and even even going to the, to the interview. I didn't really know. I'd, I'd obviously tried to research it as yeah. best as I could, but I still didn't get my head around exactly what exactly it was, what it is. Yeah. You know, I knew it was like building materials or something like that. But yeah. Um, so yeah, so I was green and green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. So, but yeah, I, I think um, so. I got a job, and really, um, it was at a time when in this this company, and I think it was kind of across the industry where. Um, you know, this is going back sort of 16, 17 years ago, um, where you did everything. So yeah. um, a consultant was, you pretty much did everything in and around the asbestos consultancy. So mm -hmm. um, I just remember sort of hitting the ground running with, I was out seconding on surveys, I was doing, um, training to be a bulk analyst at the same time, so in the lab, yeah. analysing samples, that was kind of where um, I spent quite a lot of time okay. and, and bulb accounting as well, so to get the analytical side. Um, and I remember I, I, I got signed off for books and um, analysing asbestos samples first. Really? Did you really? Yeah. Wow. 
flowers within three months, yeah. which, which hadn't been done in this particular company before. Um, so that was kind of, when I sort of hit that, I was like, okay, I think I can get on. Because I did start with other people, mm. and I, coming from my background, I haven't got a degree or anything like that. Yeah. And the people that I started with at the same, at the same time all had environmental degrees mm. and had kind of a bit of a background on this. Geology and degrees, that, environmental and science. Academic yeah. sort of side of it. And I, and I did it. It was quite a lot to take in. I was like, am I going to get on with this? But um, that was a real push on me for me beating them. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting signed off on. And that, yeah. that sort of spurred me on into thinking, no, I think I can get on with this. So yeah, it was it was a, it was a good start. So learning to do asbestos surveys, uh, project managers, asbestos removal works. Um, that was a big eye opener. Sort of managing contractors on site, and mm -hmm. at that time we were uh, um, deemed as a supervisor. So we were working on the supervisory license at the yes. time, which has changed um, from now where we were kind of managing the actual removal projects yeah. um, and also doing the monitoring and four stage clearances. So big responsibility. Big responsibility, yeah. And it was at a time where contractors, I think, have definitely improved since those days. Um, I, I know we were, agree, yeah. we were talking sort of 15, 17, 17 years ago, and I know it doesn't sound long, but really the the, the difference in actual physical people on the ground doing a special meal has definitely come on leaps and bounds in that it's mm. kind of like a I don't know if back then it was more of a maybe people didn't really want to do that job whereas some of the people that we see today it's kind of a career for it is job. a career yeah no that is I think that's a big big point um, I think people just did the job because they fell into it or they knew other people that did it yeah. whereas now people actually actively go do you know what no, I want to Work in asbestos, maybe yeah. it's on the consultancy or the uh, removal side yeah. because the industry's grown as well. It definitely has, yeah. So, you know, managing those types of people, whereas you know, you did you do have to have a bit of value. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was fun and games where you know they would always try and sort of pull the wool over your eyes or play like, games with you to for whatever reason. I don't know, I've never yeah. quite understood <laughs> why, why you'd want to. One upset and it's two great issues because yeah. um, at the end of the day the job didn't say get signed off unless yeah. we said so. so. Taking parts of your microscope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah all those games. So that was back in the day. Um, so yeah, so. How really, did you progress then? From so there? I, had, I had a real, real good insight into all elements. So um, at that time, though, so we were doing special surveys, project management. Um, analyzing book samples and then obviously doing the reporting as well. So yes. um, writing reports, issuing reports um, based on what we've, what we've done. So that gave me a real good sort of grounding on to be able to do pretty much everything in the specialty industry. Yeah. So um, from there it sort of um, progressed. So I started being um, responsible for my own clients, mm -hmm. managing those. Um, and that's where it sort of developed in sort of a contract manager role. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I had. I had good bit of success in there so I actually um, one of the clients that I had at this particular company actually recognised my um, ability and what I'd done for them and, and yeah, how, gave how me, they, uh, how yeah, gave me uh, a, an award for um, basically having them get as best as a client. Right okay. Yeah so it was a, it was a big retail chain. Wow, that's I mean that's amazing getting a, an actual award for helping a client with their asbestos issues. Yes. Um, I mean, what did you help them with? Were, were they did you take it from like zero to everything? Or um, well, they they were the, the particular kind of came to the company because they they weren't satisfied with their kind of supplier. Yeah. Um, and it was basically they, they had a big issue about managing their their, their project. So as you can imagine, retail mm. um, they they can't afford to have downtime. No. Um, with regards to refurb works. And asbestos was a big issue for them at the time because um, it wasn't being identified correctly and therefore right. causing unplanned delays. Yeah. Uh, and you know every every extra minute that they're not trading is they're losing money. Cash is king. And yeah, exactly. And being so open is king, yeah. <clears throat> that was a big that was a big thing for them. So it was initially getting that process um, sorted and ironed out. Um, so you know there weren't any delays, and then it was going back and and sort of working on the management side. So getting in compliant at yeah. this date, 
and getting their management plan, new inspections, etc., all sorted. Um, so yeah, getting all that in a, in a short tour, time scale that they sort of recognise and fair play. Yeah. What, what, what award was it like? Was it they just sent you a letter or? No, it was an actual, um, they had annual um, contract uh, um, award ceremonies. Right, okay. Um, and so it was a big, big deal. Yeah, it was a proper round. <laughs> it wasn't just a <laughs> have a letter to say thanks. No, no, it no, it was a up on stage, up on stage one. Thank you. Did you get a little trophy? A little trophy, sticker, and I don't know what's it called, vouchers. I think it was. Yeah. I can't, I can't remember exactly what it was, but yeah, it was, you know, to be recognised by a client oh, for, yeah. for something, um, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was, that was, that was a, definitely a high point. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I went on from contracts manager. Um, I then left um, and I went to another consultancy for a, a short spell um, and then I went to a, uh, it was a, a removal contractor with EUCAS surveillance department Okay. Um, and I was a director there, yeah. um, operations director and helped them build it from you know just a, a couple of people that had to, um, you know, it was good, good to sort of 20, 25 people so yeah. um, and at that point um, I thought maybe I could probably do this for myself. Mm -hmm. um, so I sort of left there and here we are at Acorn. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> that's just a brief overview of my career. So um, within that, just to bolt on, so moving on from the contracts, I've done quite a lot of training for um, individuals and businesses, mm -hmm. and basically just trying to promote the um, awareness about asbestos and the dangers of it, yeah. um, trying to keep people safe, mm -hmm. um, which is hence. Um, to do with it as well. Yeah, no, very good. So, yeah. So, I mean, normally we, we would ask a client um, or the interviewee, why do you want to talk about asbestos? It's obviously completely yeah. different with you. Yes. Um, but uh, around that, I want to ask you, I mean, it is still a taboo subject. <clears throat> yeah. Why do you think it's taboo? Do you think it should be? What, what's your take on it? Yeah, so it is a taboo subject, um, but only really when people. I think the, the taboo-ness comes from people having a lack of understanding and um, because of that lack of understanding they don't know whether they comply or not yeah. and I think and that's why people are scared to talk about it because uh, it's talking about the unknown and are they right and are they compliant yeah. um, but I think in, in, from my experience people who are compliant or have got some knowledge about it don't mind talking about it. Mm. So I think the, the tabooness comes from lack of knowledge, yeah. um, which is hence, you know, like I'm quite passionate about trying to spread the word of because um, if we're thinking about asbestos, um, first before anything, I know it's our strap line, um, it, it really does make a big difference to any project, to managing asbestos, keeping people safe. And that's what the asbestos regulation is all about, is basically preventing people being exposed to asbestos fiber. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's definitely. Yeah. Fair play, that's, uh, that's my kind of take yeah, on it yeah, as well, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> so, getting into kind of the nuts and bolts and things that you've seen and done over the years, what, yeah. what's the worst thing you've seen? Ah, the worst thing that I have seen? In asbestos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've seen some pretty poor um, asbestos removal works yeah. over the years where you go in and you, um, particularly around boiler rooms and stuff like that, um, damage like contractors damaging stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, putting hammers through tiles, right? Drip, okay. Running cables through ceiling voids. So normal kind stuff. of electrical contractors, yeah, um, yeah cabling yeah. contractors, that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, right? through smashing holes in asbestos insulating board, and you see the, the brand new cables, you know running through them. Yeah. Um, I've seen some pretty horrible um, uh, spray coatings mm -hmm. over the years. I remember one particular site where um, there was a spray coating that had been applied to the structural beams and columns throughout the whole property and the, the client at the time was of the understanding that it had all been removed. Wow. Um, and it was only at the point when we came in to do the survey that okay it had been removed from sections of the, the actual steels themselves but yeah. the, the asbestos spray coating was within the wall cavities yeah. it was even underneath the carpet 
yeah. literally the carpet tiles pulling them up and they spray yes. coats of debris underneath those carpet tiles. Just got everywhere. It, it was literally. And they thought they were safe. They thought, they thought was everything gone. was gone. They thought everything was gone. That's crazy. Um, because they'd moved it from the actual steel columns and uh, beams within, you know, that you could see sections. But it was still hidden within the actual fabric of the building. It was right. actually even underneath the carpet tiles. Yeah. Which was like it just really blew my mind. You know, you lift up a carpet tile and you've got to spray debris underneath mm. it. Um, so what ended up was that whole property had to be completely stripped back. Yeah. Into to the steel frame. Yeah. There's nothing else left. Yeah. Steel frame and concrete floor. Crazy. That's probably the uh, the worst, like extensive. Yeah. Like you literally the building was stripped back to nothing. Mm. Um, and yeah, we found bits, you know, everywhere. Uh, and that and that is the danger with spray going. It does go everywhere. Um, and then people like this client was aware of it on the actual um, where it was supposed to be on the steels yeah. we took over sort of those bits but what they weren't aware is it was everywhere else. else it was everywhere literally everywhere so that's probably the worst scenario that I've seen well that kind of I mean that, that's a <coughs> bit of a strange one in itself but yeah. that kind of leads me on to what's the kind of strangest or weirdest bit of asbestos that you've, well, you've seen <coughs> yeah um, not particularly strange but the one when, when I first started in the industry um, and doing, doing asbestos surveys the one that, all, that always sort of like blew my mind at the beginning was asbestos mastic bags on the only side of Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, I know where you're going, when, yeah. When somebody says yeah. to me, like, have you checked the mastic bag? I was like, mastic bag? I don't even know what, what is a mastic bag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> underneath the sink. Um, but it's obviously common knowledge now, and um, yeah, just checking under the sink, you can see this black bitumen mastic thing on, on, the, on the underside of it, and that contain asbestos. That's very true. And it's like how many sinks over the years have I actually gone underneath and looked at and never even noticed this black vision we've had started, but who knew it would who knew that asbestos? Yeah. Um, no, that is that is a good one. I mean in the industry now there's a bit of a joke about well surveyors always sample plastic plants or whatever because yeah. there's usually one there. But when you're not from the industry um, yeah, I suppose you're right because I never thought about mastic pads until I was in the industry. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously, there's been I've seen lots of you know strange things from like you know toys um, with asbestos in it, um, you know manufactured items, um, iron boards was another one. Mm -hmm. like, you know that was you know, very common to have asbestos on yeah. an iron board. Um, but you know looking back, yeah. It's, it's just especially surprising own, things. Yeah, yeah. Some weird and wonderful things like you know irons and, and stuff like that. They was they I like to see they excite me now. Do you know what I mean? You get the weird and wonderful things that yeah. surveyors come back and go, Have you ever seen this before? And I'm like, No, I haven't. Yeah. And I've been doing that for you know, 17 years. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe um, fascinating. Nice. Um, so, what's kind of the, I don't know, either asbestos wise or asbestos management wise yeah. um, job wise contract wise what's kind of like the best thing that stuck out in your mind when you thought wow this is a good, <coughs> good bit of work or something like that yeah. I don't know um, there's been quite there's been quite a lot of um, so with, with asbestos it's it's hard so if you employ a builder yeah. and they come and they build you an extension or something like that the builder can look back and go yes that's a good extension. Yeah. You, you get an end product, don't you? Yeah. A lot of times with asbestos, um, especially asbestos removal, we're taking stuff away and it ends up that you've got nothing there and it looks horrible. It looks um, worse than before and you it started. It looks worse before you started. <laughs> it's hard to sort of get excited about those. But the jobs that I particularly like is where we're remediating. Um, so, for instance, um, boiler or plant rooms. Okay. Where you've got asbestos pipe lagging insulation on the pipes and uh, maybe residue on the walls you know the the historically typical asbestos boiler room mm. where you take that from looking horrible like a bad strip or something in the yeah, past and horrible and dangerous yeah and you um the client can't afford to remove it all yeah so you really make it good make it safe those are the jobs i, I, I quite like because you get an, uh, an end product so yeah you know, we take a boiler room looking whole, old, dingy, flaking paint off the walls, all the pipe works all ripped and horrible and there's asbestos debris everywhere. Mm. And then we take it and we produce it safe, make it safe so we encapsulate the walls, the pipes, 
you know, rewrap the calico pipes, yeah. completely seal those in, um, paint the ceilings, um, completely clean through the, the whole boiler room. You even go to the extent of painting the floors. So when you then step back and at the finished, you know, it looks like a brand new boiler room. Yeah. They're the jobs that I like where you can look back on it and go, right, you've done a really good job in it, it looks mint and it looks lovely. Yeah. Um, and everything's all compliant and they're quite a safe. Like you boiler say, room. a lot of the time what we do is it's not about um about making something safe or getting rid of asbestos is one thing, but it, it's not that often that we do um, those kind of jobs where we're actually doing something that should be presentable at the end. Yeah, I can, yeah, I can yeah. see that satisfaction definitely. Yeah, and it's like sometimes when we do surveys as well, um, what the client sees at the end of the day is the, the end product is the survey report. So yeah. we take great pride in producing a good, easy to use, colourful asbestos survey report um, that the client can easily use and extract the information they need yeah. um, rather than filling it with stuff that we might want or mm. we might think is necessary yeah. um, as an industry. As an industry, yeah. yeah. There, there was a period, wasn't there? Of, yeah, you like, just get pages and pages and pages of like caveats and yes. gumph. Gumph, yeah. yeah but that's a good word. Yeah, yeah, you don't need it. You don't need it. All the client wants is to know where my asbestos is, what you've done, um, what areas haven't you done? And can I find it on a plan? And where's my register? Mm. So, yeah, producing those end products is what I get excited about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you can, around yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly. Right, yeah. <laughs> so this is the big question we always ask people that we interview. Yeah. Uh, what does asbestos management mean to you? Yeah, it's good. It's a good question. Asbestos management is it's about keeping people safe. Yeah. Um, that's that's a uh, I've touched on earlier. The whole purpose of the asbestos regulation is to um, stop people dying from asbestos related diseases. You know, it is still a big problem. Yeah. You know, Five thousand people a year are dying from asbestos related yeah. diseases. Um, so it is still a common problem and it's an issue today. Um, so asbestos management is really about getting that and preventing people basically dying from asbestos related diseases. And it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be an after, it shouldn't be an afterthought. Mm. Um, you know, as I said before, asbestos, you should be thinking about it in everything you do within buildings and properties, etc. It should be the first thing we do anything. If we plan any works, um, always think about asbestos and how can that impact your, your job. And then it's taking the steps to, to manage that process, so identifying it. Um, and then if you can then replan your works. That's probably the, the cheapest and mm. probably the safest way to do it. But then it's taking those steps to maybe get the specialist in to help you either remove, remediate, um, or, or additional planning to, to rectify that. Sure. So that's probably yeah. in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What it means to me. So, with that in mind, what you've just said, mm -hmm. what would you do to? change anything so what would you change whether it's regulations <coughs> industry um yeah well obviously there's there is kind of there is some constant changes there's been quite a few changes in in my career yeah um and we are still awaiting some some reads and new changes that have been on the cards for a long time yeah um, with the new analyst guide yeah um, hope Hopefully, I'm told that should be out this year. Yeah. Um, but what I would like to see is uh, an area which kind of slips underneath the radar um, is within the domestic market. Okay. So currently, um, asbestos is not on the agenda of all solicitors, um, estate agents, people buying houses, and I, I really do think that asbestos should be in, included within that. You have to have a, uh, an energy certificate to sell your house. Yes. It's like... Well, why? why? It, in 2019, yes. why should you not have an asbestos report? Exactly that. It's yep. like, yeah, okay, it's good that I'll get the knowledge that I might not have an energy efficient house, but what about the knowledge about am I buying a house with full of asbestos? That's yeah. a poor condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So I'd like to, not, not necessarily the regulation, but I'd like to see some improvement on the knowledge and the awareness around that being given by these professionals. Mm. Um, you know, definitely from the solicitor side of it. If you're 
um, working on, you know, we look at flood risks regarding the house. We yep. look at all sorts of things on as part of that process of due diligence about buying a house. But Contamination in, in fields or wherever near yeah, the property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether uh, you've got a government that's by the, the local church on your house. Yeah. But if the tree at the end of your road's um, got a preservation order on it. Yes, yeah, exactly. But, but we don't look at something that can kill you. Yes, but we don't look at, or it's not always mentioned um, about, yeah, yeah, a potential deadly hazard that might be in that house. And it's ridiculous when you kind of lay it out there against those other things yeah. that are important. Yeah. But then, I mean, like you say, if your house isn't energy efficient, it's not going to kill you. No. But if you've got asbestos, in your property and it's, it is not in a good condition, well, uh, you, you you are going to get exposed. Yeah, and, and particularly with um, the house buying process, if you're buying a new house, unless you're buying brand new off plan, chances are you're probably going to do something in that, aren't you? Yeah. Whether it's redecoration, renovation, and at that point, that's when, okay, if the asbestos is in good condition, you're then at a greater risk of disturbing that than you did renovating the house. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think there's a there's a big area there that's that's gone under the radar yeah. for a long, long time. Just on that as well, just as a thought on that, it, as well as the health risk, it's also the uh, monetary risk. Yeah. So you're looking at buying a property, and then you, after you've purchased it, and then you can't get anybody to come and work on your property because lo and behold, you've got asbestos everywhere. Yeah. You're going to uh, a Inc incur. In terms of massive costs, cost. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, from what lemon, basically. Um, bought a lemon, yeah. Um, but that is obviously if you buy, if you um, engage in like contractor, because yeah. as we know in the domestic yeah. market, um, you know, again, that's a, that's another point where there are, say, sole traders, tradesmen that are one not aware mm -hmm. or sort of negligent of wanting to sort of. Uh, mention the word asbestos uh, the fear of not doing the job yes. uh, and that sort of blind taking a blind eye to it yeah. uh, and potentially risking themselves and you know their employers you know. mm. that is that's, I mean that's a massive point there um, definitely yeah so if you're in around domestic market I'd like a bit more focus and again also to add to that um, the, the HC haven't really ever um, run a campaign Regarding the duty to manage, yeah. they spent um, they spent money on uh, the hidden killer, hidden killer, yeah. which, was, which was geared at trade people, which I, I get because they're at the forefront. Yeah, um, they're at most most at risk of coming into contact with asbestos, so I, I do get that. Yeah, um, but from a duty to manage point of view, um, you know, we're still getting uh, clients come to us that have no idea about. Yeah. It. Their requirements under it, yeah, um, and yeah, it, it's it's quite shocking still. Um, you know that that regulation's been in place for you know since 2002 and the enforcement since 2014, um, and yeah, still today we we're, we're talking about it as a new thing. I know it's mad, which is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I, 2004 to now, it's just a long, long time, and it's not not enforced. It's not public knowledge. No. Um, yeah, shocking, and there's. You know, more people die from asbestos related diseases than they do on road traffic incidents. Yeah. And if you compare the the campaigns over the years that yeah, have especially. educated people about road safety. Yeah. Um, speed awareness and yeah. things like that, all the all the funds that have been spent on that yeah. to reduce deaths. Um, yeah, and you compare that to asbestos and it's yeah, minuscule. It's different, isn't it? Yeah. So what's one bit of advice that, um, that you would give um, to anybody who is involved with asbestos, around asbestos, what's the, your number one bit of advice? Um, I kind of touched on it um, earlier. It's, it's definitely always think about asbestos. Um, the countless times that I can um, regale where people have been quite well. mm -hmm. they've, they've, they've tried to maybe, did we need that survey? Well, we've had a survey done, but it's only this area. Um, we haven't had that check, but it'll be alright. It'll be alright, chance it. Right. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's always expect the unexpected with asbestos. Yeah. Um, because um, just the way it was used, it was so, like, you know, ad hoc 
surprising, unusual places. Um, you know, even surveys today, we're still finding stuff which we're thinking, why was that ever put there? Um, so yeah, I don't think you can always think about asbestos. Asbestos first. Um, expect the unexpected with it. Um, get on top of it. Um, that would be my advice. Nice, good bit of advice. Well. I really enjoyed this because it's not often we actually sit down and, and talk about talk stories. about it generally and get well, engaged each other's opinion yeah. and all that stuff. It's quite nice. I, I enjoyed that. Good. Um, I hope that was useful for everyone. Yeah, I hope everybody listening and watching found it useful. Um, thanks for thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Remember, asbestos first, not last. Um, if you do want to join the Asbestos Knowledge Empire, um, go onto Facebook and search for the Asbestos Knowledge Empire group, and then. We can help you further from there. Um, that's it for today, thank you. Cheers.